Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak Finding myself in the midst of you Beyond the music, beyond the noise All that I need is to be with you And in the quiet hear your voice, word of God Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty to be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness I'm finding myself at a loss It's okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to worship this day online. I pray for the Lord's blessings to be with you as we meditate today on God's word and we listen to God speaking to us through that precious word, through not only our lectionary series, but also through the gospel and the sermon for this day. I'm David Ritt. I'm a retired pastor who uh, is glad to be back here to fill in once in a while as a worship leader and homilist for St. Paul Congregation. I pray that uh, we will <clears throat> feel the Holy Spirit working with us today and that you can go home filled with inspiration that God has truly blessed you in this online service. Let's begin then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. I've been out of step with you for a long time, in the wrong since before I was born. What you are after is truth from the inside out. Conceive in me a new, true life. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Give me back my joy again, you have broken me, now let me rejoice. God, make a fresh start in me, shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. Going through the motions doesn't please you. A flawless performance is nothing to you. I learned God worship when my pride was shattered. Heart shattered lives, ready for love, don't for a moment escape God's notice. Amen. Sharing in that confession of sin, God has heard your cry for mercy and fulfills his promise to save and deliver you. And lavishing his grace upon you in Jesus, he enables you to love and forgive as he has first loved and forgiven you. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Weak and wounded sinner, lost and left to die. Oh, raise your head for love is passing by. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus and live. Now your burden's lifted and carried far away And precious blood has washed away the stain So sing to Jesus, 
Sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, and live. Like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl. And remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus. Fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, and live. Sometimes the way is lonely, and steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark, and pours the rain. Then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, and live. Oh, and when the love spills over, and music fills the night, and when you can contain your joy inside, then dance for Jesus, dance for Jesus, dance for Jesus, and live. And with your final heartbeat. Kiss the world goodbye Then go in peace And laugh on glory's side And fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus And live Jesus, fly to Jesus, fly to Jesus, and Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, 
and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless the Lord. Our Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah 15, verses 15 to 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me and my persecutors, and your forbearance take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you, to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel for this weekend of the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at the 21st verse. These words of Jesus will also serve as the basis for my sermon to you this day. Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but only on the things of man. And then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, and yet he forfeits his soul? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends, I have a pastor friend right now who is currently serving in the capital of the Czech Republic in Prague. When I told him that uh, I had been invited to serve at St. Michael's Church, the church that he's serving there in Prague, uh, a couple of years after I had left office as a bishop and district president, I was asked to come there for about a two or three year period of time, but the timing was not right for me to um, leave here and to go over there for about two or three years. But in any case, I've stayed in touch with this pastor who then accepted the invitation to serve as pastor at St. Michael's in Prague. Recently, he wrote me these words. I wish you could be here, Bishop. This is a beautiful, beautiful city. It's a city that's filled with churches, but unfortunately, a lot of empty churches. But there are plenty of crosses here in Prague, he wrote to me. To miss the crosses in this beautiful city, one only needs to be blind. But the problem is that though the crosses are seen by the people as they move in and around this beautiful city, the cross has not reached into the hearts of most Praguers. For so many, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Perhaps a way to interpret that verse of Scripture and to understand a little bit of his thoughts and why he wrote that to me and quoted that verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 would be to say that the cross for so many worldly people in this life is seen by them as a sign of weakness and death. Some perhaps would even say, what sort of God would lower himself to such a horrible thing as a cross? Such was the thinking of the disciple Peter. When Jesus told the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and be killed and on the third day be raised, Peter rose to the moment as only Peter could. He looked at his master and he said, God forbid, Lord, that you would do that. This shall never happen to you. What a contrast from last week's gospel, we heard Peter say to Jesus, you are the Christ, you are the son of the living God. But now a few days after that testimony that he gave to Jesus, Peter begins to think through his mouth as only Peter can do. And he thinks to himself, Messiahs don't die, at least not in my book. Jesus do yourself a favor and, and get rid of this fixation that you seem to have about suffering and dying. You need to find another way, Jesus. There's got to be an easier way to be a Messiah. And what does Jesus say in response? And gets right into Peter's face. And he says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Can you imagine what Peter might have been thinking at that point in time? Peter might have been thinking, he just called me Satan. I don't understand. This is my master, my master teacher, who I saw heal the sick and still the storms and to feed unruly crowds with food and to call Zacchaeus to come down from the tree so he could go into his home. This is my master teacher, have fellowship with sinners. This really hurts to be called Satan, that I'm not on the side of God, but I'm on the side of man. But you know, that's just like Peter. Impulsive. Always ready to speak before thinking. But sometimes we're like that too, aren't we? Our human frailty and our incomprehension of wise ways can cause many of us to say the wrong thing at times, and there are numerous times a day that that can happen. Just think about how many times a day you speak words. Someone once said that the average person 
speaks about 20 to 30,000 words a day. And with this new invention that I have, and you probably have too, it's called an iPhone, probably that number of words goes down a few thousand to maybe eight to 10,000 words a day. That's a lot of words to be speaking. But when I was a judicatory officer in our synod a few years back, I had a retired pastor on my roster who, as I called it, went into the business uh, and much to my disfavor as a bishop and president of the church body, he went into the business of marrying couples who did not have a church. And he had an affiliation with about five different funeral homes in the city where he once served as an active pastor. And they could call on him at any point in time for somebody would die and they didn't have a church home, so they would call on this pastor and he would come to do the funeral services. A few years back, I saw him at a Western Regional Pastoral Conference, and I asked him how his practice was going. And he told me in response about a rather embarrassing thing that had happened to him in that kind of ministry. It was a very hot day in that town that day, and he was walking in town, and he came across this woman who obviously knew him, but he couldn't remember her and under what circumstance that he had met her. Actually, it's what I would call an unaffiliated funeral service that he performed for the woman's husband. The woman thanked the pastor for what he had done for her and what he had said about her husband at the funeral, but not quite knowing what to say to the woman because of his memory lapse. He turned the conversation to the husband and he asked the woman, so, how is your husband standing the heat these days? Now, there was a man who should have remembered the verse from the book of Proverbs, where it says, he who holds his tongue is wise and keep himself from calamity. But my friends, in all fairness to Peter, he, he just didn't want the Lord to suffer and die. But in reality, he just didn't understand. He simply revealed a portrait of what he thought a Messiah should look like, what a Messiah should be in life, certainly not one who would go and to be hung on a cross and to bleed from that cross, to get whipped and insulted and ultimately to die on a cross that was reserved for the criminals of the day. And to make matters worse, Jesus said to Peter, if a man wishes to follow me, he must deny himself and take up a cross of his own. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but he ruins himself in the process? Now, understandably, Peter was thinking, and then he was saying, and he was doing what most of us say and do about a cross that comes our way in our lifetime. Try to avoid it, if you can. At all costs, try to avoid suffering to come into your life, and then convince yourself that suffering serves no purpose in life. Just stay positive. Just think positive. Take a deep breath when all these problems and these ills and these trials come your way and everything's going to work out. But our society doesn't help much when it comes to denying oneself and taking up a cross and following Jesus. I remember a wedding that I performed a, a few years back and during the social hour prior to dinner at, a, at the reception, I was in a conversation with a man who was invited to, to the wedding and I wound up in the conversation asking the man, uh, about which church he attended. Then he looked at me and he said, oh, I'm, I'm good without going to church. Then I paused for a second and I smiled at him. And then I said, well, I'm sure you are. But by whose definition? Yours or God's? We were both polite to each other the man soon found a way to excuse himself from our conversation and 
he just headed straight back to the bar from where he, where he had come. And you could tell that a cross was definitely not in his value system of life. He was more like a progger in an American city with a lot of crosses in it, but none of which he could identify with. But for Jesus, a cross was necessary. Jerusalem and Golgotha were straight ahead for our Lord Jesus Christ. He was, as Isaiah foretold even centuries before Jerusalem and Golgotha, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was stricken and he was smitten of God as he carried our transgressions. And by his stripes, the world can be healed. In that setting, Jesus carried out the mission his father had sent him to do. He denied his divinity. He died to self. And he left us with these words to think about. Deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. So my friends, what's the lesson that we learned from Peter today? I think the lesson is that discipleship is costly. The more we want to set our own rules in life for discipleship, the sharper the rebuke comes from the Lord. The more we want to gain the world, the more likely we will forfeit that discipleship and head right back to the bar as a proctor. There must be an easier way, right? Well, there is. A cross. Lift it high, my friends. It can be foolish for some, but for us, it is the power of God unto salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the shadow of death your perfect love is casting out fear and even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near and I will fear no evil for my God is with My God is with me. Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. See the light that is coming for the heart that holds on A glorious light beyond all compare And there will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes We'll live to know you here on the earth And I will fear no evil For my God is with God is with me. Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Keep never let go singing oh no you never let go through the calm and through the storm oh no you never let go in every high and every low oh no you never let go lord you never let go of me the 
Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles. But until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles. But until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.